Really, the right way of doing police work. Then there's a way you two do it. Now's a good time to do something. Now that is what I'm talking about. This is the stuff that my mother used to tell her friends about. My son is a genius. My son is a genius. <laughs> That's the sound of the police. Throwing out the plane That's is the a last sound. thing this motherfucker needs to worry about. If he's going to continue to direct stuff like this. Who, who would this motherfucker be? Uh, Kevin Smith. Thank you for saying that goddamn name. Because, yes, Kevin Smith is fucking responsible for this fucking big load of shit. Yeah, oh. it's, it's unbelievable <laughs> to me that I'm actually saying this is Kevin Smith's worst worst movie. But, yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, just, just <laughs> yeah. think about, okay, the name of this movie is Cop Out. And this the, that name alone has so much more hidden meaning into it than we'll ever know. <laughs> because, holy Jesus, I cannot believe what... I suffered through tonight. Isn't this the first movie he ever directed that he did not write? This is that's what I think it is, and it's oh. a terrible script. It's not his script. No. And even though I, he's directed some of his own terrible scripts, and yeah. I'm like you, man. I mean, after watching Clerks too, I was like, shit, it can't get any worse. Uh, apparently, you throw Tracy Morgan in the mix, he'll fuck your movie up quick. And oh. trust us, I know <laughs> some of you kids out there. You're like, oh, but I love Clerks too. Fuck you, spill guys. You don't know what you're talking about. Kevin Smith is a genius. Oh. I guarantee you, you are not gonna like this movie. This is not. A Kevin Smith yeah. movie. And by the way, shut the fuck up. Who was ever saying that? Yeah. Oh, no. I want to thank yeah. Kevin Smith for directing this movie. Mm. I'll thank him wholeheartedly for making this film. Because for years, I have told people, I like Clerks. I like Jason Amy. But I'm serious, people. If you take a hard look, Kevin Smith is not that strong of a director. Not at all. I completely and agree. this is the yeah. movie I think that... Finally, this is a film that is going to convince people like, oh, yeah, shit, you're right. Yeah. yeah. And if you can't and if you still can't be convinced, you know, you need to wipe that Kevin that that you need you need to wipe off that goddamn Kevin Smith jizz off your goddamn eyeballs to really realize that this guy just is not capable of directing a simple cop film. I mean, a simple cop buddy film. I think he had like interchanges of dialogue and in jokes from his him and his friends singing around getting oh. high that have been there since high school and so he made clerks out of that and he made mall rats out of that which i personally kind of like i like mall rats and he made chasing amy out of that but then he was out of those jokes and that was it that was that was all there no, was you, when he ran yeah. out of those you know what he relied on just going back and doing star wars references yeah star wars and, references and, and and fart and poop jokes and you know and i'm actually shocked that I did not realize that Kevin Smith uh, didn't write this script because I I had I had a bunch of nails and I had a hammer and I was ready to nail his ass to the cross to fucking die for his sins for making this piece of shit because honestly like half the dialogue is just movie references it's like shit that you know Kevin Smith is into and I don't know if he went in and like got a fucking crayon and just wrote in some shit like um. Let's have Tracy Morgan say, these aren't the droids you're looking for, during a ridiculous, retarded fucking interrogation scene oh. that just pulls every goddamn quote from every goddamn movie Kevin Smith ever loved for crying out loud. Not to mention yeah. to reference, have Bruce Willis go, yippee ki I don't know what movie that's from. Oh, oh geez, Kevin, man. that's so clever. Oh, my God, man. I mean, the, it, first of all, uh, Tracy Morgan is just – we talked about this. Uh, yes, Tra we Tracy did. Morgan <laughs> – can do nothing else but be Tracy Morgan. <laughs> Nobody can have chemistry with this guy. Mm -mm. This guy's a loose cannon, and yet they open up the movie with Tracy Morgan theater. They do a yeah. Tracy Morgan one-man <laughs> yeah. show where he's doing all these uh, one-liners from films, like you said. You yeah. know, King Kong can't got <laughs> shit on me. Yeah. He's not the droids yeah. you're looking for. <laughs> That's a nice <laughs> you <laughs> motherfucker. There's no place like home. How are we going to work this? Same way we always do. I interrogate him. You write it down. Oh, so you're making decisions now. I hope the whole 6 9 know you're making decisions. I'm going to play the bad guy on this one. Doubtful. Undoubtful. Highly doubtful. And you know why? Because you don't play the bad guy. You just steal all the lines you hear on TV and the movies that you like. Watch you learn, Jimbo. Oh, what you doing, man? Yo, cop! No, no, no! Put the gun down, man! Look! You in trouble, B? What? You don't wear a with Tom. Now he's doing Al Pacino from Heat. I got the death penalty in 12 systems. Star Wars? Tell us about the chicken. Schindler's List? We're gonna need a bigger pool. Fiddle juice, fiddle juice, fiddle juice. Everything on cable TV. Yippee-ki-yay,
I've never seen that movie. That's the thing. Like throughout this whole thing, throughout this whole movie, I was like, I do not understand a single word of dialogue that Tracy Morgan is saying right now. All I hear, this motherfucker must be chewing on the biggest wad of gum because it's all like, I've got no place to go. Yeah, I was laughing for poor Bruce Willis, who I don't know, like who he sold his soul to, or like who has pictures of him. He needed a check, boy, or something. Yeah. But, but he's like sitting there the whole time like he is just he's not even bothering to mug really he's just kind of like I've been in I've been in so many cop movies I could do this asleep you look at the script okay and first off like this script what it's script just, try, and, try and pay attention to just the script take out the parts that clearly yeah. Kevin Smith punched up Kevin Smith style mm -hmm. which are are few really mm -hmm. I think uh, but they are there and and go wow this is crap this is a film that was probably written around 1987, 1988 as a yet another ripoff of Beverly Hills Cop and 48 Hours and umpteen other terrible fucking movies like that. Because it really is. That's it, all it dude, is. This script is so fucking terrible. You you couldn't even adapt it into a goddamn coloring book. I'm like, what, what is going on with these lines of dialogue? What is going on with this ridiculous plot of revolving around uh, fucking Bruce Willis's daughter needs money for her big crazy wedding and yeah. the only way he can get this money is by selling an old trading card that he's had for years since he was a kid but while that's going on ju it just so happens that there happens to be a, a, a couple of <laughs> a couple of collector thieves who go around a Fucking robbing comic book shops and baseball card shops. They happen to grab his card, and then all of a sudden it gets into this other crazy plot revolving around a bunch of Mexicans, like, and they're all under the leadership of Cuban B from from from, from, from Dave Chappelle's uh, Half Baked. Who's and, walking around the whole movie thinking he's Al Pacino and Scarface? Dude, I, I thought he was still playing that character from Half Baked because his eyes are looking crazy. Half the shit that he's saying is just ridiculous. Like it, I was like, is this some bad skit? That's just dude, was this another film or something? I just I was it, it was so. It was almost self-conscious because I was watching. I was like, all right, Kevin got handed this terrible script. Mm -hmm. And he was like, the only thing I can do with this, the only thing I can do <laughs> yeah. is make it as if I was doing an homage to the films of the 80s, the buddy cop films, or maybe a <sighs> tribute, or maybe maybe it's a send-up. But it's not, Kevin. You're just not good of enough of a director to do that. And what you get is just a crappy 80s-style film with yeah. all mm -hmm. of those things in there. Even, I mean, he adds like Axel Foley-type music in the background. Well, through the whole movie, there's a soundtrack. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's bad synthesizer, yeah, keyboard yeah, music. It's the music that was in all those films. Yeah, all those films. It, it's, yeah. The movie, it's, it's the music that is pre-programmed into every Casio keyboard in, of, in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And this movie is one big uh, homage to the they 80s. They even remind you by constantly saying homage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At the beginning of the movie, he, they, yeah, they make a big joke out of the word homage. Mm -hmm. And... It's, I mean, I'm sorry, just not original bone in that guy's body at this point. I mean, I really yeah. do have hope for the guy. Thing is, I think Kevin Smith is a brilliant guy. I've heard bits from his appearances where he speaks. I've read some of his blogs. I think he's a very intelligent, clever, and very quick guy. I don't know what happens to him with some of these movies. But like you said, man, for this, it doesn't come off as a tribute, an homage, or anything like that. It comes off as a worse film than mm -hmm. the movies that he's trying to play mm -hmm. tribute to in the 80s. Like, you, mm -hmm. like we were talking about in the car coming home. There were, you know, dozens upon dozens, hundreds of these movies after successful films such as 48 Hours, uh, uh, Beverly Hills Cop, uh, you know, Stakeout. I mean, and people just tried to copy that formula and they ended up being bad movies and being bad TV shows. And this, if I'd seen this on HBO during that period, I would have been like, wow, this is one of the worst ripoffs of those films I'd ever seen. This would have been trite and, and too late in 1989, yeah. much mm -hmm. less now. Yeah, and like you were saying, I mean, if you do want to know what the plot is here, you kind mm -hmm. of summed it up. I mean, you know, Bruce Willis plays a uh, cop named Jimmy Ron Monroe. Tracy Morgan plays Paul Hodges. And oh, I thought you were going to say Jar Jar Binks. Jar but... <laughs> 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 Shit, at this point, you might as well say Kuta Kinta or something. He's taking it back that far. Oh, uh, dude, I, wanna, I wanted to bitch slap Tra as much as I love and worship the comedy of Tracy Morgan, I honestly wanted to bitch slap him with a goddamn uh, a, a copy of the DVD Roots just to, just to say, what are you uh, fucking yo, man, this, doing? This dude, you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're removing black people. You're taking them back to, to the horrible era of film, which was 
what was it? So uh, Soul Plane? Was yeah. That- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, yeah, he's he's just silly in this movie. And they, well, they played a couple of New York cops, and they're trying to stop this Mexican gang. And as you say, in the meanwhile, they get put off duty in a really horrible chief of police talking oh, to the God. cops. The moment you guys are fucked up again. I can't believe you did this. Give me your Give badges. Me your badges. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, like really, Whoa. dude? Yeah. So I'm, really? So off duty, if that trouble's happening, and Bruce Willis has to pay for this expensive wedding for his little bitch-ass daughter. Shouldn't be asking for that, for that kind of money from a New York cop. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's going to pay for it through a baseball card. Somehow mm-hmm. this baseball card it links back to this Mexican gang. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. you get these stupid subplots like, is Tracy Morgan's wife cheating on him? Yeah. And it's it's horrible, and man. And Jason Lee mm-hmm. playing the, the, the guy who's married to Bruce uh-huh. Willis's ex wife yeah. and you're like why are you here oh, why man. and you know really what? just for one gag at the end of the movie yeah, and, and i have to the... tell you he he at least played his part decently like i didn't cringe watching him yeah i was scratching my head going dude you i don't know what you did to to be under the thumb of kevin smith but oh man dude you had you actually have a career this guy yeah. isn't going anywhere hey, after this yeah. film after, <laughs> after watching him in this movie those chipmunks don't look so bad now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. but you know the worst no. subplot had to be the other two cops the beverly hills cop like joke there the the two cops that they come compete with or whatever oh exactly. so i kept waiting Ke- kevin pollack yeah and and uh, adrian brody i kept waiting adam for brody adam brody i'm sorry i kept waiting for that's a, that's a brody that's here a, that's that's thing. like don't put me in this shit sorry I'm sorry rumors kids i could have sworn tracy morgan was gonna put a banana in their t- tailpipe at any moment. <laughs> I, I was like, you, "This is what this is." Because they were, uh, yeah, they were the Judge Reinhold character and whoever that other fat cop was from. Uh, uh, yeah, Beverly they were Hills cross <laughs> that and the other that yet other team that they were like. The, even those guys were fucking mm-hmm. with. So come on, man, these are all so old. You're not doing anything new or funny here at all. Every once in a while, every once in a while, Tracy Morgan goes so far and inappropriate and just what the fuck movie do you think you're in mm. that it's actually kind of funny there's like a whole scene where he's talking about taking a shit when they're on a stakeout and i couldn't help myself i started hey, laughing I, I don't blame you I, that was the only scene i laughed at tracy morgan's on such rapid fire in this mm. movie i mean he's out of control yeah and, and there are points where you just can't help but laugh at him mm-hmm. i mean because there's one point where he's talking about uh chimpanzee oral sex yeah <laughs> <laughs> it made me, and I chuckled, man. Yeah, I, I, was I so not even out of left field. I laughed. I mean, that came out of nowhere. I like to watch monkeys giving head. You know, yeah. I was like, okay, I, I, that's funny to me. Yeah. I wouldn't but, be surprised at all to hear that some of that stuff was stuff that Tracy, Tracy Jordan, Tracy Moore. I get mixed up now. <laughs> oh, the meta no. Thirty Rock thing, but that some of that he just came up with because mm. some of his best moments on Thirty Rock are always just like that. Something it's such a weird non sequitur. You're like, what the fuck was that? But I have to admit, there are there are a lot of scenes in this movie that just made me cringe and be almost embarrassed for the guy uh, I mean there's scenes in here where Tracy Morgan is running around as a cell phone for crying out loud oh, yeah. and they try to get as many labs as they can uh-huh. as possible and it just does not and it work is, and it, it goes terrible. on and on yeah and you know and, and then I, I see Tracy Morgan getting his hand his fucking head shoved in, in sand you know and, and basically he's just like the the bitch puppet of Bruce Willis throughout yeah, this some, entire some movie. Of this is not, yeah. Some of this is not funny. It's just not sad. It, I mean, is, you, it you is sad. You sit there shaking your head like, yeah. well, how could you let yourself stoop so low? I, exactly. Embarrassingly exactly. go nowhere. Yeah. I tell you, the thing that probably would have helped us out more and the thing that I heard was all right would have been the action. I mean, they, I heard that some of the action scenes were pretty all right in this. Did I miss it? I, yeah. well, I thought you were going to say a script, Corey. But no, yeah. no, we already established <laughs> that. But no, because uh, anybody who knows that these kind of movies, these uh uh, these uh, 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 cop buddy films slash action films from the 80s, they had a, a surprising mix of humor mixed in with really violent action. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the action in this movie is violent. There's a little more blood than you'd see in any Kevin Smith film. However, those scenes are film bland at They, they are. At, they, at yeah. best. They're yeah. just very bland. I, mean, are... I can't even say they're terrible. They're just mm-hmm. they're pretty standard. And the thing is, if you wait for the end of the credits, he edited this movie, too. Oh. So maybe in the hands of no a better excuse. editor some of this could have could have been better but yeah. combined with his direction which for a lot of action scenes are just they're not choreographed right this they're, they're filmed either too close yeah or with no dynamic sensibility to them at all yeah. and so what you get with those combination of those two you just get really bad uh action and <laughs> and comedy yeah. overall which makes for a bad experience of a movie yeah. if, I, if i had one positive thing to say about this movie besides the one or two lines that uh that what's his name tracy morgan let off mm-hmm. uh i like sean william scott did you really i did he <clears throat> there was one point where he actually was making me laugh mm-hmm. i the if, because looking at him in the trailer i was like wow he's annoying me 
But everybody else annoyed me so much that he was the one that I came in and just said, you know what? This is a guy who I know his character is not supposed – his character – is not supposed to take anything seriously at all. Yeah. However, that came across as he's not taking anything seriously at all. Yeah. But he is a gimmick and nothing but a gimmick in this film. Yeah. And he does bring more enthusiasm in it, into this film than anybody but uh, Tracy Morgan. But, you know, I'm sitting there going, why are you here? Yeah. Why are you here? I thought he was paying homage to Joe Pesci's character. In the Lethal Weapon film. In the Lethal Weapon film. That could have been very yeah. well what they yeah. were yeah. doing. It yeah. could have been. Yeah. I mean, we forgot to throw that movie in there, but, too. But the thing is, is that you, you're right. You know what? When when he when he pops up on Stifler, when he pops up on screen, you're like, oh, God, this is about as annoying as I thought it would be from watching the trailer. But the guy actually starts to grow on you because it's like, it's like you know what? He's the only real character in here that I can so <laughs> identify with you. He's the only one that's really yeah. kind of having fun with this. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. He, He's like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I'm getting a paycheck. Yeah, and I'm hanging we, out with Bruce, but I'm a fucking fuck it. I'm going to have fun. And this movie is so random that, you know, I like things when they're random. I can't mm-hmm. really explain why they popped up out of nowhere. And, and there is one scene in here with Sean William Scott and some guy that he's in jail with and this guy has nothing to do with the movie and Sean William Scott is doing that mimicking thing mm-hmm. uh, to him in the movie like he does to Tracy Morgan. Yeah. Car, you shut you shut up. He's doing it to that guy uh-huh. who's in his jail, some, some tough looking guy. And he's like, hey man, hey. And that guy's like, <laughs> Just overacting, like, yeah. man, can't you see I'm going through some shit right now? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. like, that is so random that that scene yeah. made me laugh. That was, was a like, great scene, and I, and all I thought was, you know what? If they didn't have the other scenes where he already had done that with the mimicking, if it was just that one scene, <laughs> that would have been the greatest, funniest scene in that whole movie. You but know? you man, let you know. Let's talk about Bruce Willis and Tracy Morgan. Suppose they're supposed to be cops who have known each other, worked with each other, nine years, much brothers for, for nine yeah. years. And I got the feeling that these guys hadn't known each other for nine minutes. No. Well, love, well, that's because by the time we found out, it had no. been nine seconds. Yeah. The movie starts, and it's literally them, Tracy, Tracy Morgan going, we've been cops together for nine years. That's yeah. like some of the first dialogue yeah. in the entire film. You're like, hey, you know that whole thing yeah. in films where you usually have a lead mm-hmm. in, and you build mm-hmm. up the energy, and you have some yeah. credit sequence and all that? Yeah. Well, fuck all that yeah. shit. We're just going to go, we've been together. Here's the exposition to yeah. get out of the way so you and, know and, what the fuck is going on. And I'm going to keep repeating nine years until it gets into these people's heads. Yeah. Nine years. And you can't help but ask. It's like 20 seconds after that. You're like, there's no way, dude. Bruce Willis would have yeah. shot you in the second Yeah, year. exactly, exactly. <laughs> And yeah, that's what we said. Yeah. We were, it was kind of like because throughout the whole movie, Tracy Morgan just pretty much. I mean, I, there, there are scenes where he, he literally is just like, oh no, yeah. oh no, no, no. And, and Bruce Willis is just looking like I'm gonna fucking kill this guy. Dude, these guys have about as much chemistry as two guys taking a piss next to each other in a fucking public bathroom. I mean, I just, I was like, dude, but you, obviously you guys didn't read the script together. You had, you haven't rehearsed any of this shit together. You're just. Let's see what happens when you mix when you mix the crazy Tracy Morgan with the crazy ass Bruce Willis character from Die Hard. Oh yeah, and and these two guys they're going along their own path. Yeah. They're just reading lines. Mm-hmm. They have yeah. no interaction with each other. They're Not just they all. might as well yeah. be in two completely different. And Bruce yeah. Willis, I mean, yeah, he don't get off the hook here either because he, mm-hmm. like you say, he's just fucking sleepwalking. Through yeah, this. he is. I thought he was just playing his character from from Die Hard, just hey, doing well, his thing. Any yeah, number, that's it. He's played a cop so many mm-hmm. goddamn times already, yeah. and it's like Bruce Willis point, the cop. He that's could totally do this in his sleep. Like I said, mm. I'm sorry, dude. You never should have fucked that midget. Whatever. You know they had cameras in the area, but but you know what? You paid for it now, so move <laughs> yeah. on. Do something real. Oh uh, my yeah. god. god, damn, man. <laughs> god damn this fucking movie. I tell you, yeah. No, I heard a little story. And I was telling you about this earlier uh, from somebody who was on the set of the film, and Uh-oh. they said, and this is probably some of the problems here. They mm-hmm. said, like, hey, you know, Tracy Morgan and Sean William Scott, they can improvise, and they can improvise for hours, mm-hmm. and they said that shit could be funny. Bruce Willis cannot improvise all that well. And I wouldn't, hey, I don't blame him. He's Bruce Willis. I don't expect him to improvise. And so my point is here, you got some guys who are improvising, but kind of going on their own way. You got Mm -hmm. one guy who can't improvise, who's trying to be just as funny, if not funnier than them, Mm -hmm. who can't really keep up, but is still doing his own thing. And in the film, unless you got a director who can bring them under under tight reins and make them kind of play off each other, Mm -hmm. you get exactly what you see. People who are just not, they're going the opposite direction. Those guys are from an improv background. Bruce Willis is an actual actor. He is from, like, the experience, like, here are my lines, I'm going to read these. Hey, do you mind if I try something a little different here if they're improving type of thing? You don't just make it up as you fucking go along. No, no, these guys are like, yeah, water and oil. (laughs) Do not go well. (laughs) Water and loud 
black ass oil. Yeah. <laughs> black oil. Texas tea. Well, you said some black faith. It is black foolishness. It's Kevin Smith foolishness. It's Bruce uh, foolishness. It's all kind of foolishness in there. Foolishness. This movie is is really it's 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 a mess. It's yes. a victim of anything that could go wrong with a mm-hmm. film. Bad script, bad direction. People who just don't who just don't gel on film. I mean, this this is such a misfire. Uh, I, you know, hey, need I say some some old bullshit? Mm-hmm. It was, and I tell you what, this is almost close to a fuck you just because they didn't have a screening of this. And I had to go see this shit at goddamn midnight. <laughs> oh. But I'm gonna be nice and say some old oh. bullshit. You know. I, I I'm I'm right there with you actually. Uh, it's not not only the worst Kevin Smith movie, it's the worst Bruce Willis cop film. <laughs> it's the worst uh. Bruce Willis film. This is worse than a bigger mess than Hudson Hawk. It really is, and that's saying something if you've ever seen yeah. fucking Hudson Hawk. <laughs> yeah. Okay, at least Hudson Hawk has a couple moments you're like, okay, that was pretty fucking awesome. There are some moments not, of brilliance. This <laughs> does not have any moments of brilliance. <laughs> it's just a mess, oh and I'm in, I'm frankly, you know, Kevin Smith. I know you're very talented, but you should just stick to doing an evening with Kevin Smith stuff and telling stories on your lectures thing because you're awesome at that. And your blog is fucking great, but you cannot make movies anymore. Please stop. Oh. This is a some old bullshit, just up and down, stamped on its forehead, tattooed on its ass. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, what nice. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, very as well. You, as you said earlier, it yeah. is a cop out. Yes. <laughs> and as much as, yeah, I, I meant that, I meant every word of that. And you know what? I'm giving this movie a fuck you. <laughs> All right? <laughs> fuck you with a fucking nice helping of fucking gooey shit on. All over it. This was terrible. This is up. This is on par with the goddamn disaster movies. I mean, I was I was cringing every moment. I had to sit in that theater watching this movie. I was I. I Kevin Smith, congratulations for being able to perform the very first lobotomy in a theater <laughs> with no kind of medical incision in anything. I mean, Jesus Christ! I was drooling at the end of this film because I was like, "What just happened? What just what? I just lost a moment of my life." Yeah, suddenly you're one of the inmates at Shutter Island. Just <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This is cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> yeah, no, uh, this, you this can't is... treat robots like this. Not this at all. Way. I won't stand for it's it. Against yeah. the Geneva Convention, Kevin Smith. I know. Yeah. In fact, for your next movie, why don't yeah. you just come up to my fucking house and just nail a nail into my head? You know what I mean? Because <laughs> after years of trying to give you chances, yeah. I'm fucking through. All right. Exactly. You know, go make make the next Star Wars trilogy using your goddamn action figures already, because that's what you've been dying to do. Just fucking do it, because I guarantee you it's going to be a bigger fucking uh, extravaganza than this film could ever be. Oh, yeah. And to be fair, it might be better than the prequels. So. Yeah, that, that is true. <laughs> now, now you're using your brain. No, 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 no.